Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. So today we are going to learn about the trip power system. So these are the topics that we are going to learn today. Okay, so let us start on the definition of fluids. So fluid is a substance that continually deform under an applied shear stress. So fluids are a subset of the phases of matter and include liquids, gases, plasma and to some extent plastic solid. In common usage, fluid is often used as a synonym for liquid with no implication that gas could also be present. So basically there are two types of properties for fluids not resisting deformation or resisting it only lightly and the ability to flow also described as the ability to take out to take on the shape of the container. This also means that all fluids have the property of fluidity. So in general there are two types of fluid system. The first one is called fluid transport system where it is used to deliver a fluid from one location to another to accomplish some useful purposes. For example, pump stations for pumping waters to home and also cross-country gas lines. The second type of fluid system is called fluid power system where it is designed specifically to perform work. So work accomplished by a pressurized fluid bearing directly on an operating fluid cylinder or fluid motor. Fluid cylinder produces a force in linear motion and fluid motor produces a torque in rotary motion. So fluid power is a technology that deals with generation, control and transmission of power using pressurized fluid. For example, a brake system, uh, spacecraft launcher, mine coal, drive machine tool, and even drill teeth. It is almost impossible to find a manufactured product that hasn't been fluid powered in some way at some stages of its production. The first type of fluid power system is called hydraulic system, where the fluid is liquid. So it can be petroleum oils, synthetic oils, or in certain cases water and the second category is called pneumatic system where the fluid is gas or specifically a compressed gas these are the example of the fluid power system on the left hand side is a hydraulic chainsaw and on the right hand side is a pneumatic chain hoist so we can use uh, both hydraulic and pneumatics for any tools depending on the load requirement. If the load is high, then we need to use hydraulic system. However, if the load is low, then we can choose to use pneumatic system because it is more friendly for our environment. Okay, these are some of the advantages of, a, of fluid power system. The first one is the ease and accuracy of control. So by the use of simple levers and push buttons, the operators of a fluid power system can readily start, stop, speed up or slow down the process. The second one is the multiplication of force, where a fluid power system can multiply forces simply and efficiently from a fraction of an ounce to several hundred tons of output. And the third one is the constant force, where we are capable of providing constant force throughout the process regardless of speed changes. And finally, the last one is the simplicity, safety and economy. So in general, fluid power systems use fewer moving parts than comparable mechanical or electrical systems. Thus, they are simpler to maintain and operate. This in turn maximizes safety, compactness and reliability. However, there are also some disadvantages of the power system. The first one is the noise. So noise comes from various components such as pumps, compressors, pipeline and so on. The second one is messy. This is especially true for hydraulic system. So leakage may occur and if not bothered, the surrounding area could be messy. 
However, constant cleaning could avoid the problem. So in any case, the fuel tower system requires a prime mover, which is an electrical motor or engine turbine. The fourth one is in terms of the risk. It is dangerous because it produces extreme pressure and if there's a leakage, oil will be forced out. Stopping the flow with bare hand could result in a punctured wound. So, while in process, oil become, became hot and flammable, though not easily happen. Therefore, it is advisable to control the temperature by limiting it. Some of the applications for fuel power system include a crane, excavator, backhoe, um, electrohydraulic system for control, press machine, molding machine, lift machine, and other industrial machinery. These are the example of the hydraulic cylinders that are used for excavation process. So in this picture, we can see at least there are four cylinders, four hydraulic cylinders used in order to move the arm of the excavator. Skytran is also an application for hydraulic system. And apart from that, we have other uh, application including lifter, forklift and hydraulic power robot. Okay, these are also some of the other application, press machines, molding machine and lift machine. So basically, if you are talking about industrial machineries, so modern industrial machineries often use fluid power system that is based on a hydraulic system. So where else uh, we also can have pneumatic applications in various manufacturing environment and also some of the light um, light work uh, tools such as pneumatic impact wrench and so on. Okay, I have included some of the content in the ULEARN under week 2, you can watch some of the videos I have included in the week 2 here. For example, the pneumatic robot arm by Festo, pneumatic uh, robotic arm by SMU Robotics and also the uh, working principle of a JCB arm uh, based on hydraulic system. And after the lecture, please fill up the form for feedback of week 2. Okay, let's continue with the component of fluid power system. So basically, there are six components for a fluid power system. In hydraulic system, we have the first one, the basic one is a oil tank, where it is used to hold the hydraulic oil. And the second one is a pump to force the oil into the system. The third one is an electrical motor or other power source to drive the pump. Number four is valves to control oil. So we have various types of valves, basically categorized under directional control valve, pressure control valve, and flow control valve. And we also need actuators to convert the pressure of the oil into mechanical force or torque in order to do useful work. And finally, we need a, a good piping system which carries the oil from one location to another. Okay, this is the uh, images, the image for the components of the hydraulic system. We start with the reservoir in order to hold the oil and then we have pump in order to force the oil from reservoir into the system. We also need some kind of a pipeline in order to connect all of the components within the system. And also on the right hand side, we have one a double acting cylinder in order for us to convert the energy produced to do useful work. Now, this is one of the example of a linear hydraulic actuator. And also, these are some of the rotary hydraulic actuators that uh, are required to do 
uh, rotational work. Okay, on the other hand, we also have six basic components for pneumatic system. The first one is air tank in order to store a given volume of compressed air. So remember, for hydraulic system, we need an oil tank, but for pneumatic system, we need air tanks in order to store compressed air. The second one is a compressor to compress the air that comes directly from the atmosphere. Number three, we need an electrical motor or other prime mover to drive the compressor. We also need the valves used particularly to control the direction, pressure and the flow rate. We need the actuators which are similar in operations to hydraulic actuators and also we need a certain pipe, a very good piping in order to connect all of the components. These are some of the um, examples of the basic pneumatic system. You will learn uh, in detail of the component required for hydraulic or pneumatics when you uh, enter or when you join the lab session. Okay, so uh, please take some time to browse through the lecture notes and also see and also take some time to watch the YouTube videos that I, I have included in the you learn uh, we under week two and feel free to uh, fill up and complete the feedback for week two. So that's all for today. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Assalamualaikum.